Hey, it's Scott Cook again, coming back at you with another Kerbal Space Program. We're back at her. This time I'm going to show you some more uh, interesting ways of developing energy besides just launching nuclear reactors in space, or fission, or antimatter, whatever that may be. We're going to look specifically at a cheap, abundant piece of energy. We are talking about the sun, yes. And this time I've got four probes on a cradle here that are going to harness the sun's energy. Now, you may be wondering, well, what's the point of this when we've got, you know, megajoules of, of uh, power already being generated in space? And the reason is it's just cheap and abundant. So basically, this is four probes. They're built on a cradle, and I'm launching them here with a standard rocket. Uh, I'm actually going to skip ahead a little bit here just to get ahead. And uh, we're going to pick it up with my next vehicle. And we're going to deliver these someplace special. Someplace awesome. Okay, you probably have guessed it. We're going to the sun. <laughs> Pure and simple. We're going straight at that big glowing ball of energy in the sky. And uh, we're going to take advantage of it. Now, in the, in the Interstellar mod, there's a couple of situations here where you can actually use the stock vanilla parts, like these uh, Gigantor Sun uh, solar panels, to generate megawatts. And I'll get into that in a bit later. And this is my vehicle that's going to carry it to the sun. This is my constellation. I named it that. Um, it's basically got an Albera drive on it, which is the warp drive that I'll, you'll get to see me use for the first time in this. And uh, aside from that, it's basically a big toe. And you see the big ring at the front is the actual drive that does the warp. Uh, again, pretty standard launch. We just kind of line up with the um, solar panels that I launched earlier. And then we send her off into space. So as uh, this thing's going up, I'll talk a little bit about it. It's carrying four fusion uh, generators on it right now to generate the power that it needs to actually develop the exotic matter, which is what the Albera drives use for fuel. Now I also got to put a little bit of a disclaimer in here. This is not a tutorial on how to use the warp drive. I am still figuring that out. Uh, there's actually been a couple of tries that it took me just to get to the sun and back, and that's probably the easiest thing to hit because it doesn't rotate. Everything else rotates around it. So therefore, pointing your ship straight at it is actually quite easy to get there. It's uh, hitting everything else, it's a bit of a challenge. And I'm going to spend some more time with the drive before I do any real tutorials or any real this is how you do this kind of stuff. Because it's it's tricky. It adds a new, the uh, drive mechanic in it is very interesting, very difficult to master. Completely different than just about everything else we've done in Kerbal Space Program. So, all right, so we're getting up to the top here and doing my gravity turn. We're going to be going up, and I've got uh, attached to the four fusion engines on this, this ship. Uh, I've got four thermonuclear rockets, so I should generate a fair amount of thrust at a really, really high efficiency. If you can, It's unfortunate that I had to launch this on the night, but uh, if you look at it when we get into space, it's actually only carrying a very, very small amount of fuel. It does not need much at all, and you get insane delta V with some of the interstellar stuff. And I'll get into that as we go. Uh, you, I burn a lot of delta V going to the sun and circularizing the orbit. And uh, you'll see that later. All right, getting finished off here. There we go. We're starting to get into the sun now, so you can kind of get a better look of it. Look at it, excuse me. Burning forward to finish the circularization, dump the tank, and there's all four nuclear boosters going. Again, very very efficient, decent thrust, but very very high ISP, which is what you know I'm really looking for in this ship. This kind of design I was going to use as a bit of a tug to pull stuff around space in general, so as uh, as we moving loads from different planets, I'd probably use something like this design so that I could uh, take advantage of the, the warp drive and, you know, still have plenty of orbital, or plenty of conventional thrusts to do things. And now we're just opening the solar panels, launching, lock S foils in travel positions or something. <laughs> I noticed here that I accidentally aimed the panels too close to each other toward the center and they now clip through each other, but fortunately they don't break on each other, which is good. Now we're just uh, powering up the Albert drive and it's going to start generating exotic matter. That's the fuel that it uses. The only thing it needs is power, but it uses a significant amount. I'll have to double check the rate, but I think it's like every gigawatt of power is... Um, equal to it generates one exotic matter so again I'm tapping into my relay network pulling power from it to help power this thing up now there was a second reason why I wanted to leave the Kerbal system and you know do some stuff out in space and that is time I need to burn some time up 
because that's going to lead into what I'm going to do with the next episode is uh, maintenance on some of these machines because that's another feature that I have to take into consideration when uh, when using the interstellar mod but we'll get into that as time goes on here now I'm just uh, doing some rotations trying to get the maximum amount of power of my relay I'm still generating antimatter and I'm still collecting it with my probes and we'll revisit those as well a little bit later uh, we did have uh, one guy comment on one of my videos that he actually found that if I go even higher I would find better antimatter in the Kerbal system and we'll go into that a little bit later anyway this is the rendezvous I'm uh, sending my ship to go pick up the solar probes and then once we do that it's just a pretty much a simple docking maneuver to uh, to collect them and then we burn we go straight at that giant ball in the sky that gives everything life apparently so this is a pretty standard maneuver um, I did find some design flaws in my my warp ship here uh, <laughs> the RCS was a little wonky uh, I'm probably going to redesign it and come up with a better one a little bit later in the series because uh, overall it's good but I also kinda you know found a few little problems that I want to address so anyway coming in closer here this shouldn't take too terribly long I'm uh, running this video at four times normal speed I have been for the last little while for the last several videos because uh, quite frankly there's a lot of time-consuming these maneuvers and anyone who's played KSP and done any of these kinds of dockings is familiar with it so I figured I'd just kinda get to the point with my videos here as much as I enjoy this I kinda really could have uh, done this a little quicker too but anyway we'll just ditch the old stage here dump it back into the planet and uh, so I don't have the good old Kessler syndrome or don't get it alright so that thing's going back in the planet go we'll just rotate this to face the warp ship and then we'll use the docking alignment I gotta be careful with the docking alignment on this one too because the probe cradle is fairly big and I gotta make sure I set it just right to fit between the engine spouts or I could cause probes damage and you know that's the last thing you want to do the probes for the most part just carry a little bit of monopropellant their bodies are made up of a giant heat sink and uh, or radiator and they're just solar panels and a transceiver, a microwave transceiver. That's all they are. Uh, once I get to the sun, I'm going to drop each probe and then just use the monopropellant to adjust its uh, velocity. And then they're just going to sit there, open their solar panels, and transmit uh, energy outside or straight out from the sun. Now, why would you, I need to drop these by the sun? Well, you can drop them anywhere and they will work. However, the closer you are to the sun, the more energy you can potentially get according to the uh, mods wiki so I decided to kind of test this theory now we'll come in we're just about ready to dock we'll fly out to the Sun and we will drop these off and see how much energy we generate now this also has the added bonus that these satellites will never be on the night side of any planet if they're always facing the Sun which means they're always transmitting energy they'll never shut they'll never stop now as long as you're and that also provides me with an interesting you know navigation point if I'm ever needing energy and I'm not anywhere able to take advantage of Kerbin's network I can simply point at the Sun to grab it with my uh, receivers and uh, anyway so that was kind of the reasoning why I did it so now we just aim the ship here I'm coming across to uh, start to switch the camera because there's no way to actually click on the Sun and target it like you can with another planet or, or something in space so the only way I'm doing this is I'm eyeballing it I'm gonna follow my ship with a chase camera point at the Sun and go and here we go this is warp drive for flying out of the system fairly quick and it's kind of a neat effect and neat sound uh, I'm not going very fast because I've only turned up the speed but you can get going pretty fast there's a multiplier in the Elbear drive that lets you you determine how fast you want to actually fly so one other neat design feature is you don't have to put the Albert drive on the back of your ship like you would a traditional engine or have it spout facing out it doesn't seem to matter uh, where it is in your ship so long as your ship has and as you can see here my first attempt didn't end up so well I'm actually gonna end up in the Sun so yes I did reload a couple times and attempt to do this I actually I did attempt a few times to burn some Delta V and see if I could correct that but ultimately it was kind of a, a lost <laughs> thing 
like I said when I was starting this, this is not a tutorial on the outlier drive. This is my literally first attempt to do it, and it's not something I would normally put in a video. But I figured, you know, hey, why not? I mean, it was a legitimate attempt. Didn't work out so well the first time, but now, you know, I got the hang of it after a few tries. Still trying to work out some of the orbital stuff here. This is where I loaded. And we're going to attempt again. Again, eyeball on the sun and just trying it out again. And truthfully, like I said, this is drive adds such a, uh, a different mechanic to the game that it's going to take me some time to really play with it before I figure out exactly how best to utilize it. And even then, there might be something better. My initial problem that I found out after the fact was that I was just burning too close to the sun. And when I come out, I was uh, there. But a second attempt worked out pretty good. I got a periaps of about 350 kilometers an hour, and then I spent some delta V to bring that down a little bit too, since the, the ship was only intention to visit the sun and then come back with it, come back, and uh, drop off those probes in the meantime. So we get to about where I want it. We drop the first probe after I load up some monopropellant on it and decouple boom I guess I had them a little close because that ejection force kicked them out but fortunately there was no damage everything worked just fine so so basically we open up the panels I aim it on the retro or the uh, retrograde vector and then I just burn the monopropellant until it's out and that was my intention was to that was how I was going to separate the probes We're just uh, getting lined up here and then we're going to go and just burn away. Now, my inclination and my, um, you know, orbits aren't perfect. They're not perfectly circular. So that's fine. And the reason I brought four probes with me was I intended to split them at about 90 degrees around the orbit uh, approximately. However, I ran into a little mistake that I did and that didn't end up being the case as you'll see a little bit later here. So once we get this uh, monoprop all burnt out here, it's about half done now, I will turn on the microwave wheelie and we'll see how much power we get. And it might be kind of surprising exactly how much power you can get when you're this close to the sun. Part of the reason I also uh, did the heat sink body was just to make sure we dissipate any waste heat because one thing you got to remember with the interstellar mod is if it generates energy, it generally generates heat. So even stock vanilla solar panels will generate heat that you have to dissipate. So now you can see here, we are transmitting uh, sideways. We're getting about 47 megajoules of power, which is, you know, okay. That's not bad considering all the solar panels are not full capacity. But when we turn them to face the sun, we end up transmitting 71 and a half uh, megawatts of power. That's pretty darn respectable when you consider it's free, maintenance free power. So next thing we got to do here is I've got to wait till we get the orbit separate separated a bit and then I drop the next probe and I'm just going to speed through some of that because it's it took a while I think the overall this mission took me about 50 to 60 days just to get it done and that was mostly because I was in orbit around the sun waiting for the proper time to drop tanks now I made a mistake with this probe I forgot to fill it with monoprop before we before I dumped it and I was like don't but so I just kind of accepted it uh, still just did as much as I could with it to get it right but that actually screwed up my probe distribution a little bit however because I brought four probes you know I could correct it with the uh, the other two my original plan was to do a probe every 90 degrees on the orbit didn't end up quite working that way I've got now one probe that uh, spins a little bit faster than the other three because it's it hasn't didn't have enough pro, um, propellant to slow it down, so I ended up distributing them a little bit more like I did with my relay around Kerbin at approximately 120 degrees with one quote unquote wildcat probe that uh, is just kind of doing its own thing. Still end up working just fine, and I ran into a weird glitch too here where my decouplers wouldn't fire. Fortunately, the only thing I had to do to fix it was just to log the probe back in, and it uh, it came back up. So that was good. <laughs> now I did remember to fill monoprop on this one before I launched it, so that's good. And we'll just open the solar panels and get her into position and there's not really too much more to it. It's pretty straightforward as we go here. All right. 
thrust in with the monoprop, just opening up the last of solar panels. So now I've got this energy source that I can, you know, take advantage of regardless of where I am in the galaxy, even if I have, you know, you know, as long as I'm not obscured by any planet. And this will come in really handy for when I start launching probes, unmanned probes. I have decided that, you know, this series will sort of be me, you know, conquering the cosmos, going to every planet, that kind of thing. But I'm also going to have to take advantage of some of my other mods to gain resources and do some experiments that, um, you know, you couldn't do otherwise. For example, I've still got Keythane installed, so I can use Keythane to, um, to uh, power my ships. And the interesting things too is the guys at the Interstellar Mod Pack also built in Keythane support. Uh, most of their engines can use Keythane as in its raw form as a fuel source and uh, they also have some uh, liquid methanes and aluminum engines that uh, you could take advantage of however they are a little more straightforward than some of the stuff I've shown you thus far they're pretty much just a different fuel source for some of their rocket systems so now we're just uh, finishing off the last of the monoprop and we'll turn it to face the Sun get a nice big picture of my solar flower solar flowers solar flowers I'm actually gonna start renaming my probes the Apollos just after the Greek Sun God if someone wasn't aware and that keeps them straight now the last one to drop here making sure uh, I still got energy for some reason my fusion engine is shut off on the on the uh, ship that I had to restart them once and that's a good reason to have a second power source on them because if you don't have it they're screwed and I also ran into that glitch again with the stack decoupler I'm not sure why but loading and unloading the ship fixed it, which is good. All right, so there isn't too much more, really. Uh, this episode, I'm going to finish off with some pretty shots of uh, of the uh, solar probes that I've put out there. We're going to check and see how much power we actually get at Kerbin in the next episode. And uh, yeah. I'm um, hoping you're enjoying the series. If you have any questions, concerns, comments, please let me know. If there's anything you'd want to see, if you want to see any of the, you know, in specific parts you want me to do more more specific information on, I'd be happy to. Like, it's, this series will kind of develop as me, you know, building out my solar empire. And I'll teach you as much as I can about the complexities of this mod as we go. But again, suggestions can help. It gives me ideas. Next episode, I'm going to look at some of the fuel sources for the reactors how to gain them, how to get them out in space, how to refine them, and where to find them, really. Because there's a few uh, few resources you get in a, some of the uh, engines that you can't harvest through traditional means by landing something on a planet and looking for uh, for a hot spot. And that'll be fun, too. It gets me to build a few like more vehicles to buzz around in Kerbin's orbit. And uh, for the future, then we'll start looking at uh, other places we can go. The sun was the first attempt to uh, leave the Kerbin system, and it turned out quite well. I'm happy with it. I've got four probes that are delivering 71 mega and a half megawatts of power, and I really like this spin I did here. It looked really cool against the sun. Anyway, these these uh, you can see they're kind of separated around the sun there. I didn't give you that much time to look at, but they're about 90 between 90 and 100 degrees from each other, and that should give you power regardless of where you, what time it is during the solar cycle. Anyway, that's about all I got for you for this episode. If you see in the verse, have a good day, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.